is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Ride a ride a ride. There he is. Good morning, Ira. How are you doing, sir? I'm like everyone else. I'm just caught in the rut of mediocrity of the Dolphins, of the Heat, of the Panthers, of seemingly everyone. It's you know what? Oh, the toughest place sometimes is to be stuck in the middle, and that's sort of where every team is in town right now. They could be good. They could be really good, and you are waiting and waiting. The good thing with the Heat and Panthers, more than half the season left. The thing with the Dolphins, maybe just two games left. But being stuck in the yeah. middle is such a I, – and I heard you before I came on now with the yeah, – yeah, but, but the Heat has been outside of the middle mostly. Yes. It's the Dolphins have always been in the middle for a quarter century now. That's yeah, kind of you who know, they going are. Back to Sperano and, and every other year. Yeah, everybody, and, it everybody. Was, yeah. and it's just what stuck in the middle does is it teases you that you could be better. And we have been teased all season by the Dolphins, and we have been teased with a possible home playoff game. And instead, now you're desperately – look who you're ho trying to hold off. You're trying to hold off the stinking Jets and the Patriots, who are terrible. That's where you are right now. And, and let's face it. You know, there's some seeds, like I'm looking at the NFC, but in the AFC, if you don't avoid seven, you are getting the Bills or the Chiefs in cold weather in the first round, and you're toast, and you're done. Yeah. If you get well, to six. Listen, in the NFL, the NFL is so mediocre that usually, let's be honest now, the teams that are six and seven usually don't really deserve to be in the playoffs. Oh, and that's, true of, any, any, just, that's true of any league, yeah. And again, they wouldn't exactly. have been this spot because they expanded the playoffs. So you're sort of yeah, thankful exactly. because football, which had always had the pride, we're not going to be like the NBA and the NHL, and we're not going to put half our team in the playoffs until they well, realize, man, there's good money to be made there. Everyone loves a football game. So that's what you get. But the thing is, when the Dolphins were teasing with being a number a, a six or a five seed, and you could see, oh, well, wait a minute. You go to you go to Baltimore, you go to Cincinnati, they'd have a puncher's chance. It was just a different sense. Same thing with the Heat. If the Heat are going to wind up in seven or eight and play the Bucks and the Celtics in the first round, I'll talk to you for a week on our accurate Pembroke Pines reports about playoffs, and they'll be toast. But if you can get to four or five, you're going to give yourself a chance of a competitive series. That's what they have to hope. That's what the Dolphins missed out on. All right, so we've got Cat is out for tonight. Uh, Bam and Butler are questionable. What's your gut tell you? My gut tells me it's like get on the train. The train has left the station and get your butt out there and play. And if Jimmy felt he couldn't play because he hurt the ankle in that game the other day, that's one thing. You've had two days off. They've played one game over the last five days. It's just time. It doesn't matter. It, 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 if you're injured, it's one thing. If you're hurting, you play. And that tells us a lot, Big O, about Dwayne Dedman. The fact that he's already declared out already shows you you gave money to an older player. You guaranteed him for the season. He's not available. So all of a sudden, your backup center is either a guy on a two-way contract in Orlando Robinson, a guy who's 19 years old and hasn't graduated high school in Nikola Jovic, or a 42-year-old team captain. You know what, Big O, when you get stuck in the middle and it's all these close games that could be the difference between a good record or a losing record, those subtle roster moves you made in the offseason are the ones that really wind up paining you. And we're seeing that right now with the Miami Heat. Yep. Yeah, nope. I'm with you there. That's uh that's exactly what's going on right now. So you tell me, what does Spo have to figure out here? Because I almost feel like I almost feel like this is the Dolphins' defense that I try to explain to people. It's not going to get any better. They're, they are what they are. Their entire secondary is injured. X is not very good right now. He's not that healthy. you know. So you're not going to be able to blitz them the way you used to because you don't have the, the, the help in the back end. They're just going to keep you afloat. Well, what does is, what is Spo have to figure out? Because when I look at his team – I feel it's so flawed that I don't think he can coach his way out of this because I don't think there's any coach that can coach their way out of the mess that is the Miami Heat right now. I think it's on the players. Two things, two factors, because, again, the offense is putrid, is a bottom five offense. Two things. Jimmy Butler has to show up for a lot of work every game. I know the ankle is twisted. I know there's knee pain. I know there's ongoing stuff. But when the godfather gave you a contract and said, I'm going to give you $40 million a year through to your 36th birthday, 
that I don't care what it takes. Big O, you and me are like in the start of the day, like the ascent of man. We wake up and everything hurts. And you go to work anyway, like all your listeners, like all your viewers do. This is what we do. Jimmy Butler has to do that. I don't care. I, I know this sounds almost mean. I don't care if you're in pain. If you're injured, it's one thing. Bring the x-ray, bring the MRI, or else get your butt on the court and don't miss 12 of the last 25 games, number one. Number two, so you get more offense from Jimmy by availability. Kyle Lowry, stop saving yourself. Don't save yourself for the playoffs. Don't save yourself for your final year. Show me the best of Kyle Lowry every night, and you give me the offense that when you're at your best with the Heat or best with the Raptors. If those two guys show up, because here's what's happening. God bless Caleb Martin. He's not going to give you a lot of offense. We know that he's a Heat complimentary player. Right now, your consistent offense is coming from Tyler Hero and Bam Adebayo. And they're doing a pretty good job for who they are and what they are. You need Jimmy Butler. You need Kyle Lowry. So this is not on Eric Spolstra. This is on Jimmy Butler being an every game player. This is on Kyle Lowry. Whatever it is, when you get paid through your 38th birthday, Push as hard as you can. I'm not worried about next season with Kyle Lowry. That's a tradable contract. He'll be older. Kyle, we gave you three years at $85 million. We need this year. We need this moment right now. Be an MF for right now. That's what has to happen. If if Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry join the train already in motion, I think they'll be okay. If Jimmy's going to lay back with injuries and Kyle's going to lay back with age, they are screwed. So, but how do you how do you get somebody on the court when they're missing half the games, anyways? You you tell them you tell them I, I, you tell them I'm sorry about the pain. I'm sorry you refuse to tape your ankles. I'm sorry that you're wearing the sneakers that you decided from your international deal. Get your butt out on the court. You stop being so protective of a player because you know what? You can protect Jimmy all you want. This is, he's at his peak right now, maybe a little past his peak, but pretty much at his peak. When he's out there, he's a really good player. The Heat's offense averages eight more points a game when he's on the court. Those eight points would make a huge swing if he was on the court. And with Kyle Lowry, stop the pacing of yourself. If you can give us 20 great minutes a game, give us 20 great minutes instead of 31, kind of like uh, just uh, pacing yourself minutes. No one's pacing their self anymore. They have to come in and be as animated as Ira Winderman twice a week on the Acura Pembroke Pines Report. They've got to come out and they've got to push it. You know what the most important game of the season is for the Miami Heat Orlando Alzagari? Tonight. Tonight. And the next most important game is Wednesday against the Lakers. And every game is the most important game. There's no more pacing yourself. You could have paced yourself if you didn't lose to the Pistons, if you didn't lose to the Bulls, if you didn't lose to the Pacers. The pacing has left the building. Right now, every remaining game is your most important game. Please show us that. Please show us in your minutes that the most important or else, or else th there's nothing there. There's no there there. There's no cap space for someone else. There's no great trade assets. Kevin Durant's not running through that door because he's in a better door right now. Yeah, with no, the he's like the Nets. All these players that he were going to get, except maybe for Bradley Beal, They're are done. in better situations. No one's yeah. looking at the Heat in the buyout deadline and going, hmm, I could go to Miami and be in the play-in yeah. game. And after one game, I could be done. Jay Crowder's not going to look at that if he gets a buyout. Jay Crowder's going to look at other teams and go, you know what? If I go there, I can have a good playoff, build up my resume, get another free agency contract. If I go to the Heat, they're never on national television. No one's going to notice me. The Heat put themselves in a bad spot. They put themselves behind the eight ball. Now show that every single moment matters because they haven't shown us that mostly this season, Big O. Are you telling me the Lee Nings are uh, not working well for I'm Jimmy Butler? I'm not Bobby? mentioning my name now because I try to keep myself out of lawsuit there, whatever's going on. But feel free, Orlando Alzagari, who can be reached in the I big old show. I, I, own, I own two pairs of Lee Nings, and they are freaking comfortable, bro. And are you cutting and playing hard for 40 minutes on an NBA court at the highest level of the sport? You or you blow out knee ligaments and shit? Come on, Iro, cutting. What the hell is that, bro? I'm a radio yeah, I'm, host. I'm, I'm, stay, I'm staying clear of that. I, I, th I think it's better Cutting to the refrigerator? Is yeah, that what you're talking about? And the, stu and the studio and putting the microphone on. Exactly. But you know what? I figured the Chinese are already monitoring my cell phone. I ain't saying nothing bad. I still need this thing to work. I don't know, but I, I uh, maybe he maybe he got maybe he got a, an irregular pair of leanings or something like that. He I went to Kmart know. and they had one on the rack. It was right next to the tracks, and he said, oh, "What are these leanings?" And then he put them on. I don't know, man. 
You know, Miley, what they go, but the, 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 the more serious thing is, is he doesn't tape his ankles. And I got to tell you, he was Whoa. very close at halftime on Friday to actually taping his ankles. And, and this is interesting. In certain players' contracts, it says contractually, you will tape your ankles. Now, I've seen players who do that, and then they snip them a little so they get a little more movement of range. Jimmy does not have that in his contract. He's stubborn. You know these old school guys, the guys who play football without a cup and things. Like, they just feel more comfortable. That's the way they go. Vlad but Guerrero. But it, Remember? Vlad, Vlad didn't have any – he didn't He didn't wear any gloves. It was – it was all hands uh, was on the all, bat. It was, it was all like, man, even in the weather. He would he would put it out there. Or the guys who don't wear protection in baseball. But you know what? The Heat needs Jimmy Butler to be an every game player, and they made a financial commitment to Jimmy Butler to be an every game player. I had spoken to you last week in our accurate Pembroke Pines report. I spoke to Kurt Heelan on our RedRecover.com inside the paint show about, hey, you have this back to back coming up in Denver at Utah on Friday and Saturday. Maybe you sit a player. No, no more of that. Everyone plays every single game until you win a lot of games and get a decent playoff seed. I think. Were did you did you notice that that uh, Bam wasn't happy with all the switching the other night with Vucevic? Well, it, it was it was just interesting, and he was in he was in drop a little bit. Also, they're trying to accommodate so many other players because of injuries and absences. That's why you need to be cohesive. You can play a certain style, but whether he's happy about that or not. There is still one point that has to be made here because I, I haven't spoken to you since Friday's game against the Pacers. God bless Tyler Hero, a dynamic offensive player, a great scorer, one of the best mid-range shooters the Heat have ever had. But why was he on the court for the final play against the Pacers when all you needed was a stop and he's one of your worst defensive players? And more than that, why are you ever letting him get involved in the pick and roll with a guy like Tyrese Halliburton, who was beating you already to the tune of 40 points. Again, I'm not sitting here and saying, I can Mismatch. coach better than Eric Spolstra. I have 1% of the clue he does. But there was a moment there that if, if Caleb Martin could have gotten on the court, if you could have played Hayward Highsmith or a better defender in that situation, it's almost unfair to Tyler Hero. He's simply not up to that. That's like asking the big O to dunk. You know, certain players can't do certain things, Tyler, no offense, Big O, and the Nerf ball, you're very good at that. But otherwise, and I just think that that was also a little bit on Spolster. I think there are times you could look at a coach and look at moments and going, what are you thinking there? I think. I yeah, no, man. yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. It's just, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, you, you could tell his frustrations, you know, we're there with all the switching and let's just stay man on man. But yeah, then again, it's. it's you got certain players who can't. That, that's but why. Just, that's why. That's why I tell you that I look at that roster and they're just. It, it's just. You know, it's a. It's got flaws all over the well, place. And you know what? Also, Big O, it is. And, and I had a reader and ask Ira asked me this. I'm going to answer. You can have wonderful complimentary players and wonderful undrafted stories. That's great. You don't win with those. They complement. You have to have enough to complement to be out on the court. So God bless Hayward Highsmith and what he's doing now. I don't mean this in a bad way, but he's Haywood Highsmith. Even you should have known with Duncan Robinson and his inability to defend anyone, he can, he's unplayable right now. You have too many zero defenders out there that you can't trust in those moments. Honestly, I would have rather have had Max Struess on the floor than I would have Tyler Hero if just to give you a little more defensive chance on that final play. He keeps talking up their stories, and I think they're doing a great job with undrafted players. As long as those undrafted players are your eighth, ninth, and tenth man, I have no issue. But when you're playing them in the rotation, when you're counting on the Gabe Vincents, when you're counting on the Caleb Martins, on the Max Struces, you know, on the Hayward Highsmiths, that's maybe when you're counting on a little too much. That's what frustrates guys like LeBron James. And I think, like you mentioned, I think that's what frustrates guys like Bam Adebayo as well. Is there any way? Is there anything here where the Heat are stuck in this thing where they're trying to um, also kind of uh, make Tyler happy by you're also a starter, but you're also going to be a starter on defense too, where we're going to put you in key moments? And are they trying to teach him a lesson of well, see, this is why we're going to have to pull you out because you know if you have enough examples for him like hey we can count on you on offense but we can't count on you in defense is there any part that they're worried about if they don't put him in those key moments he might also be bent out of shape a little bit because he's trying to better himself as a player and how does he do it by playing in those kind of moments and trying to become a better player is I, there I, any I, kind I, of 
touchiness there with that situation. I don't think I, so. I, I, just I, I think okay. Tyler wants his points. And on a defensive possession, Tyler knows he's not getting a bucket, so it doesn't matter. Now, some people have said to me, he left Tyler in the game with 14 seconds to go out of timeouts. So if Indiana didn't score, that he can go back and score the other way. I'm like, no, worry about one thing at a time there. I think all those kind of guys, the Jordan, the, the Jamal Crawford kind of guys, all those guys, they understand. They're not defenders. They can't. They're bucket getters. They get subbed out at the end of games. I think Tyler understands that he's a negative defender. Okay. He'll try as hard as he can. Another guy like that way back, he championship first one, Jason Williams. He tried on defense. He was too skinny, too frail. He couldn't get over or through screens. He wasn't good enough. You sub him out at the end of games. Antoine Walker. Guys like that get it, that they're bucket getters. Tyler Hero will never be. I don't want to. I'm going to sound too cruel here. I don't think he'll ever. Yeah, he'll, never, he'll never be John Stunvold on defense, is what you're saying. I got. I'm, you. Never, I'm, I'm saying he's never going to be an average defender, probably either, just because of his arm size, his wingspan, and who he is. But he makes up for that by what he gives you on offense and what's desperately needed for this team on offense, also. But you've got to be cognizant. You've got to offense, defense, sub whenever you can. You've got to save your timeouts. You've got to make the most of free throw situations. They didn't in that. The Heat can't afford these little marginal errors. There's not a lot of room for error left. Haywood Highsmith, perfect character name, yes or no for the White Shadow. Yeah, I mean, again, and I just love guys you can reverse their name, and he could also be Highsmith Haywood, like my wife always calls him. So I'm I'm fine with that. But yes, very good name. And the irony is they call him H. That's his nickname. And I even asked him, like, were you called H before? He says, no, everyone has a nickname here, so he's just H. So for as much alliteration, alliteration as there is there, he goes by H with the Heat. But yeah, one of the best names in Heat history. One, one day we'll go over our all Heat name team. But he certainly would be up right up there with Hansi Ganad and some of the other guys. Yeah, I agree. Jim Rowin Jim Rowinski. Jim Rowinski, nothing but arm muscles and nominal basketball ability, but he was That's there it. also. Yeah. Craig Neal. Let's go with noodles. Noodles. Yes. By the way, Haywood Highsmith, we can call him ladder. Explain. Put two eight. You put two H's on top of each other. Uh, uh -huh. ladder. Or or dual goalposts. I got it. Okay, there you go. What do you got going on in the uh, Sun Sentinel? So, uh, uh, Gabe, fans, Vince, Gabe Vincent was ready to play on Friday. Eric Spolcher said, I got too many moving parts. Give me a weekend. Let me figure it out. Gabe's coming back. They do need a backup point guard. It'll be very interesting now. Do you go with uh, Victor Oladipo and hoping he could be more, or do you go with Gabe Vincent because you know he'll give you some defense? Keep an eye out tonight in the Minnesota game. It'll be very interesting to see whether Gabe Vincent can make the shot. Here's the thing. Uh, Victor Oladipo's not a three-point shooter, hasn't been through his career. Gabe Vincent came in as a three-point shooter, is shooting 29% on threes now. No. It's almost yeah. like you need like a dance-off, a shoot-off before the game to see who need, who's the hot hand. I think you played the hot hand in that situation. Gabe was very candid. He said, look, I don't want to miss a game, come back, miss a game. So I took eight games off. I got it right. I don't want to knee wear the knee brace. Now we'll see what they have. Whether the Heat's depth we spoke about in training camp is real or whether it's illusory, that starts tonight. So keep an eye out for Gabe Vincent finally coming back after almost a month off. Gabe Vincent shooting uh, like uh, Tua was throwing in the first half, like a, like a you know a pro bowler. And now yes. he's shooting like, like uh, Tua's passing like Ryan Tannehill. Like I mean, to his, just, to his fourth quarter passing, exactly. So you can't have a 29% yeah. three-point shooter out there when he's a three-point shooting specialist. The team's three-point shooting has really been abysmal. Max Struess has struggled. Dun Duncan Robinson doesn't play. They've got to work on that also. Totally agree. 7.30 tonight. Let's see if they can get back to 500. Follow him on Twitter at Ira, at Ira Heatbeat. And, of course, follow him and subscribe on the South Florida Sun Sentinel Ira, thank you. We will catch up on Wednesday. With Wednesday, the inside recovered the com yep. Inside the Paint with Kurt Heelan. Right back here, Acura Pembroke Pines Report on Friday. Thanks, Big O. And uh, hey, let's get to 500. Yay. Thanks, Big O. Yeah, you got it. Appreciate it. Let's stay middling. Let's get to 500. That's Ira Winderman. Don't forget, Red Recovery.